What is going on in Iran? And maybe more pointedly, do we know? Um, thank, thank you for having me. We've had over 300 deaths, 9,000 cases declared in Iran. It's probably a lot higher uh, than that. This is the icing on the cake of 40 years of mismanagement. Uh, you know, when you think about it, 30, 40 years ago at the time of the Islamic Revolution, Iran had a higher economic development and quality of life than, than South Korea even. Now it is way, way below South Korea, way, way below Turkey, despite all the oil and natural gas. The regime has no real competence. It's both authoritarian and it's ideologically motivated at all levels so that the level of competence is not as high as it should be given the high level of, you know, of education in Iran. Um, so when you consider a lowering oil price, Iran's a, a, an energy producer, um, being ravaged by the coronavirus, we just had parliamentary elections in Iran where the turnout in Tehran was only 25 percent and 43 percent nationally. We're seeing a total collapse of confidence in the Iranian regime from the Iranian people. Well, that's a pretty long list, Robert, but let me be very, very specific. When we talk about what the problem is with the coronavirus, is it the quality of the healthcare system? Do they have a public health system that can deal with it? Is it a matter of misdiagnosing the problem and not acting on it fast enough, or do they just not have the infrastructure to really deal with it? They have quite a decent public health system. The problem has been is that the regime was first in denial mode. We talk about President Trump initially being in denial mode, but it was nothing compared to the Iranian uh, government, where the president, uh, uh, Rouhani, said that it was an enemy plot. So when you had that level of denial at the critical point when the, when the virus was starting to spread, they lost a lot of time. So this is really a political issue. They do have the health care system that could at least deal with it better than most Middle Eastern countries. Are there consequences for the regime? Because there were demonstrations, deaths actually, leading up to those uh, elections. At the same time, the elections, perhaps only 25 percent of the people in Tehran voted, but they apparently went uh, sort of to the right, more conservatively backing the Ayatollah, as it, as it were. Are there consequences for the regime at some point to people yeah. say, you know what, we don't um, think you're doing a good enough job? Uh, they backed the, the right wing won the elections because most of the other candidates were disqualified. Mm. It was as close as you could get to a fixed election, as, um, as you can imagine. The, the consequences are, look, you're not going to have massive demonstrations now, David, because the, uh, the population is scared to gather in large numbers because of the virus. Uh, you know, the streets are, are much less crowded than they used to be. But there will come a point after the virus subsides in six months, nine months, nobody knows, uh, where, there's gonna, where there may be a price to pay. And Iran has a tradition of massive demonstrations. The regime has in its corner the Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, the Basiji uh, militias. To, and, and the Iranian regime has shown as recently as last fall that it is willing to kill a significant number of people to stay in power uh, because of religion and ideology.